Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today, and welcome to our advanced training session, How Do You Life Cycle? Before we get started, I'd like to introduce myself as the moderator of today's webinar. My name is Joy Yugi, and I'm the Digital Marketing Coordinator here at What Counts. If you'd like to tweet about this webinar, you can use our Twitter handle, at what counts, and our speaker's handle is at MattLRWC. Also, please use the hashtag, how do you life cycle? Now let's meet our speaker. Matthew Ramos is our Director of Strategic Account Management, and I'll now hand it over to him to tell you a little more about himself and what he does at what counts, and then get started with the training. So I'll hand it over to you, Matthew. Hi guys, hopefully you guys can hear me. Let me know if you can't via the chat box. Um, as Joy um, graciously introduced me, I'm the Director of Strategic Account Management, Management here out of the West Coast office. Um, I work with many, many, many different clients from e-com to finance to um, entertainment to travel, you name it. Uh, prior to working at What Counts, I've worked at a couple other ESPs. Super excited to be here at What Counts and really looking forward to kind of walking through a life cycle with you guys. Now just to kind of quickly clarify to you guys, for those of you that uh, did participate in uh, the last session we did, it was our basic life cycle training. So that was kind of, you know, why life cycle, what's the point of triggered campaigns, that type of thing to kind of um, uh, get you salivating about the tool and kind of get you interested in what uh, what life cycle can do, and today's training is actually taking that to the next level. So I'm going to spend a few minutes kind of going through some basics about life cycle, but we're really going to get in to several examples of how you can elevate your life cycle experience with what counts and uh, kind of do some more complex campaigns. Uh, we'll also have an opportunity to kind of take a look at uh, API calls for those of you that are interested in the, the techie side of things. I'll try not to make it too techy. I personally am not super, super techy um, when it comes to API calls, but I can definitely talk to them. So that's, that's the plan, that's the goal today. So really, super simple agenda. What is new to lifecycle marketing? We'll touch base on that. And what are some advanced campaigns we can do via lifecycle? So that's the main goal, that's the concept, that's the nutshell. So um, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing, uh, what's new at Lifecycle? And we're going to touch base on these when we're actually in the tool and in the platform. But before we get there, I figured I'd you know, kind of take a, a couple screenshots. And of course, as uh, Joy mentioned, we're recording this, but then we're also, um, you know, we can send you the presentation as well if, you, if you'd like. But basically, we have new uh, archive feature. So if you're going in and doing a lot of testing with Lifecycle like I am, you're going and creating like you know different campaigns, that type of thing. You have the capability to go through and archive the ones that you really don't want to use any longer, and they show under the uh, Show Archives tab. Fairly simple, fairly easy. You can restore um, restore lifecycle campaigns that you have archived. Really simple, really easy. It's just a way to organize yourself. The next thing, and we'll touch base on this when we actually get into the platform, is that. When you're creating a new lifecycle campaign, you must also include a default um, notify email address. What does this do? It essentially notifies you um, if you know there's any sort of uh, lifecycle error or campaign um, error. So that's essentially what that does. All of these other features we've discussed during the basic uh, basic training. So for those of you that were not able to participate in that training. Um, let us know. Don't hesitate to reach out to your strategic account manager or your technical account manager, and we can kind of walk through that as well. Like I said, I'll briefly touch base on those when we go in and create a campaign together, but um, not going to be spending a whole lot of time on that. Building a life cycle campaign. So one of the things that I really wanted to touch base on is that now we have, uh, you'll see like when you're creating a life cycle campaign, uh, any step that's incomplete will be highlighted in red. So it gives you an easy, clear indication that you have something that's missing within the lifecycle campaign that you have to update in order to be able to save. So for those of you that have had an opportunity to play with lifecycle in the past, you know that you have to complete all of the steps in order to save a lifecycle campaign. Um, in addition to that, it also gives you, if you try to save, it'll give you um, better error messages that pinpoint exactly where that issue resides. You can go in and fix it. 
the do deploy email um, campaign step, again, when we go in and create one together, you'll notice that we have a new feature called email tracking name. This gives you the capability to apply a tracking name, which will be used for reporting moving forward. And I'll show you where that, um, that works and how that correlates to reporting as well. You can see a screenshot down below where it kind of shows like within the, um, on the, the dashboard page where it says welcome series touch one. That's part of the, um, the tracking name. The deploy campaign step is another new feature that we were just on that a moment ago, but down below you also have a notify when a step completed uh, piece here. So if you want to receive a notification anytime step one's been completed, then um, you put your email address in here. Do note, I want to clarify, you guys are like, oh my goodness, am I going to receive uh, one every time an API message is sent? That is not the case. You're only going to receive one. Um, my understanding is like every like 2,000 uh, records. So you're just going to get a notification letting you know that it's, it's deploying, it's working accordingly, but you're not going to get a barrage of emails every time one's, one's received, or sent, rather. Data check. This is another feature we're going to be touching based on. This is an enhanced feature that we, we kind of alluded to during the, uh, during the basic training. So we'll kind of touch based on that as well. Gives you the capability to create like a mini segmentation rule within a lifecycle campaign. Update data. This gives you the capability within the lifecycle campaign to update a, um, a, a field a column within the database, so that way you can use that for future reference. If you want to create a suppression rule off of that, or a segmentation rule which would suppress a, a, like a, a subset of your audience, or if you want to go in and create an additional segmentation rule for a promotional campaign, that type of thing, it gives you the capability to kind of uh, manipulate the data, which is super, super helpful. Editing existing lifecycle campaign subscriptions. So this is one thing. Uh, that we'll touch base on again when we're on the platform, but uh, when you're actually going in and editing a live life cycle, so it's an active life cycle, it will only allow you to save that life cycle as a definition. So for those of you that are not familiar with what a definition is, it's a template of a life cycle that you can reuse over and over and over and over again. Now, in order to make changes to the life cycle specifically, you would have to deactivate the life cycle and actually go in and make changes to that. And then once you've made changes, then you can reactivate. For those of you that have a question regarding that, well, what happens to the, the records that are like within the life cycle process? Um, do we lose those? No, nope, that's not the case at all. You actually, we end up pulling those, and then you have an option once you want and save to identify where you want those to fall within the process. Really simple, really easy. One other thing that's changed also is that um, the floor life cycle would only kick off off of new inserts or new additions to the database. So they were never on your database file at all, and then they would receive a life cycle campaign. We've since changed that, and now it works off of subscriptions. So um, if, for example, I'm on one list, I'm on the, the, the men's list, and then I decide because it's the holiday season that I want to be on the women's list so I can shop for my wife. I have the capability to go through and uh, you know subscribe to that, of course, update my preferences. You guys can opt me into that specific list and then I'm qualified for you know any sort of life cycle that's catered towards the women's list, for example. Make sense? Hopefully it does. All right. So let's go ahead and dig directly in to life cycle. So I'm going to go ahead and exit out of this for well, now let me kind of go to this really quickly. Before we go over into the platform, I'm going to kind of uh, detail what we're going to cover. We're going to touch base on a re-engagement campaign. That's what I promised you guys the last time during the basic training that we were going to touch base on. We're going to create a campaign using a data check uh, feature together. And then we're also going to um, you know, kind of take a look at an update data piece campaign. Those are the three main ones that I want to take a look at. And then we're also going to um, you know, kind of take a look at the API and how you can test the, the API. Awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and exit. I'll come back over here. I'm going to just make sure that I'm still logged in. Fantastic. I'm not logged in. Awesome. So before we dig into those, as promised, we're going to go through a very basic life cycle creation so I can show you kind of um, 
some of the general tools and features of the platform. Again, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on that since I'm hoping you guys were able to participate in the basic training. But if I go to Lifecycle View Campaigns, under Lifecycle View, View Campaigns, I have my campaign library, which I have the archive feature right here. If you'll notice, I can go in and archive. I can show my archive. I also have the capability to add to Lifecycle or add Lifecycle. So I'm going to click on Add Lifecycle. It's going to give me this menu. This is going to give me the capability to fill out all of this information. We're just going to create a simple welcome series. I'm going to put today's date. Um, this title is basically the title of the life cycle, self-explanatory, but the name right here is actually used when you're using, when you're creating an um, add to life cycle API call. So that's kind of the difference between the two. My recommendation is you take out spaces here. Just to make it simple, easy when you're actually um, doing an API call. The description, again, self-explanatory. Um, describes what you're doing here. Your default address, like I said, is required. Category, we've already discussed this in the basic training. So this gives you the capability to identify a category, a campaign type, and a phase, which will be used um, in later iterations of our reporting feature for Lifecycle. So we're already, we already have these created, and then you can go in and kind of use it for reporting. You can also add new categories. You can add new campaign, campaign types. You can add new phases again. That's within the documentation and something that was covered during the basic training. So I'm going to go through and I'm just going to do welcome series as my category. I'm going to consider my welcome series. I'm going to consider it transactional. I know it's debatable. It can be transactional. It can be promotional. But in my case, I'm just going to say transactional. The phase, I'm going to go ahead and say convert. And then from there, um, this is your definition. So as I mentioned before, you do have the capability to save it as a definition, which creates a template, and then you can reuse that. So you may actually have multiple welcome series based off of um, acquisition source type. Maybe you want to do that. Maybe you want to treat individual records, how you acquire those, whether they're through the checkout process, whether they're through the home page, whether they're through some sort of um, third-party acquisition source. You may want to go through and treat them differently. You have the capability to do that. So you create one uh, like uh, life cycle definition for welcome series, and then you just kind of reuse that over and over and over again. Um, so that way you're not recreating it or reinventing the wheel. I'm not going to create or I'm not going to use a definition because I want to kind of show you some basics. So click on Save. Once I click on Save, it's going to give me the option to go in and click in. Notice it's inactive. By default, it's already inactive. When I click in here, it's going to give me the capability to start creating my life cycle. So we're on the left-hand side here. We've got our, our, our actions, which I can drag and drop over. So I can drag and drop a specific one um, feature over here and start creating my life cycle. So link then. So if I want to do a deploy email and then I want to wait a day, wait duration, all I have to do is just take this and then connect them. Notice these are red. That means I still have information I need to fill out. So if I click into this right here, this gives me the capability to put in a tracking name. You know what that means now. We just covered that. That's for reporting. So I'm going to do welcome, touch one. I'm going to select my template from my template library. I'm going to select my list definition. List definitions are required. Again, that's something we covered during the basic training, but just really quickly, list, list definitions. This is going to be to give, uh, give you the capability to go on and create a simple list definition. List definitions um, entail your from address, your t uh, reply to, bounce address, all that stuff, any sort of like uh, specific things about the list that you may apply. That's the reason it's really important to include that because if you guys kind of hopefully you'll understand this concept, so you're going to start off with some sort of list, right, which is going to kick off a life cycle campaign. Well, after we put in all of the logic of people who have not opened versus people who have opened versus people who have clicked versus 
we have not, at that point that list becomes whittled down, right? It becomes smaller and smaller. Well, those are not really tied to a specific list any longer. So we have to have some sort of from a reply to address in order for it to successfully send a campaign. So that's the reason that list definition is so important. Now, let's go ahead and add a subject line. I'm going to just put your on the list. And then I have the capability, this is not required, but I have the capability to check this box and then put an email address, address in here. So that way I'm notified every time, again, not AP, all API calls, I want to clarify, but notified when one is deployed. You'll notice that at that point the red um, is removed, the red border, and it's now um, a solid set has been completed. The wait duration gives me the capability to add a duration in between steps. So if I wanted to, if I didn't care about opens, I didn't care about clicks or anything like that, I just wanted to do a standard welcome series, I could go through and say, you know what, um, after 24 hours, I want to deploy another campaign. We'll go through, deploy campaign, link it. Again, give this welcome touch to select a template list definition and say thanks for joining. I know subject lines we can debate. You know they may not be the best, but let's not um, get stuck in that world. But now we have a link here, right? We have started creating our lifecycle series, and then I can put another wait duration off this. Or I can simply go through and just end it. So this right now is just a two-touch series, regardless of opens, regardless of clicks, that type of thing. You see how really simple and really easy this is? This is really easy to do. This is a simple welcome series that you're setting up. At this point, if I wanted to go in and save this, this would be locked and loaded. And all I have to do is now figure out how I want it to trigger. Do I want to schedule on the calendar? Do I want to create a segmentation rule? Do I want it to be um, you know, triggered off of the API? How do I want this welcome series to deploy? So I'm going to take this off really quickly, and I'm going to show you this. If I click on Save here, you'll notice it's going to give me an error message. That lets me know that I don't have an end node on. So I have to have an end node in order for it to successfully close the lifecycle. Does that make sense? There's other options. You can edit lists. You can go through and move to lifecycle. These are all features that we talked about last time, but and we'll we'll kind of revisit those when we go through a re-engagement campaign in a moment. But I just I, I wanted to kind of get the basic concept so you guys understand when we get into something a little bit more advanced. For those of you that weren't able to participate in the first training, you know how it works. Um, I encourage you kind of to play with these. We have several different features over here, different options. We'll touch base and kind of um, uh, on these uh, a little bit further when we go through a re-engagement campaign. All right, so I'm going to go through and do an end node, and I'm going to close it. Click on Save. We'll give it a second to save. Fantastic, save. Now, let's say, you know, I, I want to get this ready. I want, I want this to deploy. I want this to work. So what I can do, if I have a master list that's receiving all of my new records from an API or from a preference center, something like to something to that degree, I can go under list, view list. I can go to whatever my master list is. I'll just go to this. Actually, let me go, I'm going to go to um, this one right here. Actually, no, this is a super list. Super user list won't work. It has to be just a standard list. So let me go back. Um, we'll just go to Matthew's first list. That's fine. I already have a lifecycle campaign linked to it, but the option still, still stands true. So under your edit list option, I can go to options here. Go to default lifecycle campaign, check this box right here, and then go through and sync it to the new lifecycle. Now the one thing I forgot to do, 
and you guys probably already caught it, is that I have to go through and make it active first. So I have to go, uh, go here, make sure, this is the one that we just created together, activate, now active, go to list, view list, go to my master list, options, go through and then sync it with that one. So it's this one right here, the one we just created with today's date. And it shows active. If it's inactive, it won't work. Obviously, it has to be active. So if you're ever troubleshooting and you're trying to figure out why it's not working, the first place to look is make sure that it is an active campaign. Believe it or not, it does happen. It's happened to me before. So from there, let's go ahead and click on Save. And what's going to happen at this point is any new, or actually technically any new subscription to that list, any new subscription to that list is going to be qualified for that welcome series. So again, what I was saying earlier is that we could do a welcome series that's based off of new inserts, like new inserts all together, like to your database and have a master list, but then you could also you know, uh, manage your preferences through individual lists. And when they go through and update their preferences and they're subscribed to the men versus the women, you could have a separate welcome series based off of that as well. And then, you know, we would add them to that new list and they would be qualified for that series. Hopefully that makes sense. Other way to do it is that you can go to subscribers, subscriber management, import subscribers. You can browse, find a specific list. Click on Next, Associate it. I'm just doing email. You can have multiple columns, how, how, whatever you have within your import file is fine. I just only have email. And then I can sync it to a specific list. So if I go to my same, that Matthew's first list, which is the one that we just created, and then go to um, Use Lifecycle Campaign. So this is basically what's uh, tied to the list it will kick off this when I, I click on Submit. Now, I also have the capability, say you're, you're one of those um, brick and mortar stores that gets records um, you know, via email sign up in store. And you have a paper process where you're taking their email address and they're having to upload a file at the end of the month. Well, that's a different process, right? That's not a real-time addition to your database. So you may want to go through and have a separate lifecycle series set up for that. So you can go on and override and sync it to a different lifecycle if you, oh, you want to, or you can choose not to use the lifecycle at all. You do have override options here. So that's another way. You can do it via the API. You can do it through this. You have the, a batch upload process. Again, you can do it through a preference center, that type of thing. So hopefully we've got our foundation. It's been about 15 minutes on that. So now what I'd like to do, if you guys will allow, is to go to Lifecycle View Campaigns and then get into my re-engagement example. So if I go to re-engage, oh, actually one other thing, my apologies. Um, I would like to show you really quickly for example, let's, let's take this one. If I go into this, you'll notice, and give it a second to load, it's an active campaign, so it's only going to allow me to save it as a definition, what we discussed a moment ago. If I want to go on and make changes, I have to go to View Campaign. I have to deactivate. When I deactivate and click into it, it'll give me the capability to actually go through and successfully make changes. So now I'm making changes real time. Again, it's inactive until I go on and activate it. But once I go on and I just made a, a simple change, I click on Save here. This is the piece that I wanted to show you. If you have records within the process, within the lifecycle, live records that are going from step to step to step, when you go on and save, it'll actually show you how many records and where they are within each step. So in this case, I've got eight records which are on step two. I have the option to go through and say, you know what, do I want to keep them at the same step? Because there may have been a change where I, I made a change to the whole structure of the life cycle. I removed a step. I've added a step. I've added an email campaign deploy. I've added a weight parameter. 
whatever it may be, it gives, it's going to give me the capability to go through and select what step I want to um, resume it at. Okay, that's a, a really key thing that I wanted to point out. Now, if you'll allow me to go to lifecycle, new campaign, and then we're going to go to re-engagement. So under re-engagement, we start off with a deploy campaign. All right. This is basically my first touch. I'm thinking it's the, the um, first touch here. I put my tracking name. That's another thing to note here. The tracking name has to be unique from step to step. So for example, if you were doing a welcome series that triggers um, off of an uh, the first touch and then after that you're doing a open did not open parameter and you're wanting if they didn't open the first one to remail the first touch you would have to add remail to the end of the email tracking name for it to be different to be separate for reporting purposes and everything it makes logical sense just as an FYI okay so we've got this we've got all of this really filled out the reason that I kind of went through and walked through the basics is because I didn't want to have to go through all of these each individual time. I wanted to kind of show you the logic of how this works. So basically, what I have here is I have a first touch. After the first touch, I have an open within three days. So I'm giving them three days to open the first touch. All right? If they do open it within those three days, they're automatically, based off of this within logic, they're automatically moved to the end. They're done. I think they're fine. We re-engage them. We know that based off of the open, they're an active subscriber and they're going to be put on the list again and they're perfectly fine to move forward. This click right here, if, if they do not open, then they have the option to click. You may ask a question, well, how can someone click without opening an email? Opens within our system are detected by images rendered. So there is a very good possibility that someone actually went through, was watched, you know, saw the preview within their Outlook or whatever it may be, images were not rendered, and they just saw the headline article, and they were really interested in that, and they clicked through on that, and it didn't register it as an open, it only registered as a click. So in order to do that, to really kind of get a, a solid re-engagement campaign, we have to take opens as well as clicks. So if they have opened within three days, they're done. If they have not opened within three days, but they have clicked, because you'll notice what happens is within three days they haven't opened, and then we give them an option, you know, we see if they've clicked or whatever, then we move them on to the end. So this is taking into consideration whether they've clicked. From there, if they have not clicked, so they have not opened, they have not clicked, then they're qualified for the next touch. Based off of that, they're now qualified. Uh, we go through the same scenario. We go through the open. If they did open, great. And if they did not open and they did not click, then they move on to the next step. So this is a three-touch series. You'll notice how it gets a lot more complex with your logic here. So there's a lot of thinking, a lot of brainstorming around the logic. And then from there, at the end, once I go through three, three uh, deployment stages, if they have not opened or clicked the last touch, the third touch, I have it editing the subscription, their subscription, and I'm adding them to an unsubscribe list. Even better, add them to a drip campaign list. So that way you're only mailing them through a drip series. You can even create a, uh, create a separate well, uh, like life cycle. I mean, you can even do a move to life cycle. I'm going to show you how to do that in just a moment, where you're mailing them like once every like three months. You know, there's no point in mailing these records again, so um, you know you can just move them off of your list. It's going to ruin your deliverability, that type of thing. That's the whole point of doing a re-engagement campaign, cleaning your list, list cleansing. So this is I, I have them unsubscribing, and that's just simply what, you know a choice that I made. But you do have the capability, like I said, to put them on a drip campaign as well, which is another solid strategy. So this is a basic re-engagement campaign. Now let's go through and let's do some enhancements to it really quickly. Say for example, I wanted to, like I said, move them to, I want to edit subscription because I want them to be added to a drip campaign. 
But in addition to that, perhaps maybe or to a um, like a, a drip list, a list that you know is kind of my active list, and I can use for the holidays or a special promotion that. Um, you know, your boss is saying, I need everyone to be sent an email so that way we can increase revenue. Granted, we all can make the argument that that's not necessarily the best strategy, but I know we all probably hear it. So you have the option to do that because they're technically not unsubscribed. Okay? But of course, within the, the, the strategy of your re-engagement campaign, you would want to make that very, very, very clear just as an FYI. Um, for those, in, you know, depending on action and how you spell out your re-engagement campaign, it could be a little bit confusing. So that's part of the overall strategy that you need to think about. But let's go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and delete this, this end node. And then I'm going to go ahead and say, you know what, I want to move to lifecycle. If I go through and choose the move to lifecycle option here, and have this go through, I can choose to click into this and it's going to give me the option to switch it to a different life cycle. So now perhaps maybe I have a drip campaign that I've created, I can go in and add them to that. So let's just pretend that this is my drip campaign. Click on save, that's been completed. Now I go through and just as an FYI, I know that this little uh, this pane can sometimes be a little bit tricky. You'll see me kind of toggling back and forth. I, I don't know if you, you guys may be um, you know, browser experts you know, more than I am, but if you hit Control minus on your, your, um, your actual desktop, your keyboard, it'll actually minimize your screen. Control plus will maximize your screen, so it gives you a little bit more viewing room. And then if you take this little guy over here and then you kind of use it and you manipulate it, kind of stretches out the screen a little bit. So just keep that in mind. You do have the capability to do that, and that's how you can kind of stretch your screen a little bit. So in order to sync, give me one second. Another thing you can do, and I do this all the time, and that's the reason it's kind of stretching further from left to right. You can just do this. There we go. I started stretching. There we go. That's what I wanted. I don't know why. Oh, you know what? I actually now I, I just realized that this doesn't need an endnote. Let me go through and delete. Let me save. Yeah. Duh. Ha. Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, after you move to Lifecycle, there's no end node required. So, um, I also have the capability to edit subscriptions right here. I can go in and change this to where perhaps at this, at this stage, you know, they have re-engaged. I can go through and say, you know what, I want this to go to a different list. So clearly, I mean, they're engaged. We just, for whatever reason, didn't um, know that they were engaged. So I can edit and add to list. I also have the capability to opt them out at the end of the life cycle if I want to. And I can move them to an unsubscribe list. I can opt them out. Or I can globally opt them out. So there's multiple options under edit subscription. Okay? You also have the capability to do a send alert. So at the very end of the life cycle campaign, it sends you alert letting you know that the life cycle has been completed. And clearly this life cycle is going to be running on a regular basis. And that's actually the next step that I want to touch base on. So in order to complete a re-engagement campaign, it wouldn't be helpful for me to just walk through the life cycle process without going through the actual segmentation rule and then scheduling it on the calendar. So I'm not going to save my changes or anything like that um, because I think the life cycle campaign that I had before worked perfectly. But I just did want to let you know that there are additional features that you can use to kind of enhance your overall re-engagement strategy and campaign. So if I go to list and then go to segmentation really quickly, let me go to view segmentation rules. I'm going to go to my re-engagement campaign right here. 
I'm going to maximize this again so you guys can see it a little bit better. Hopefully that's a little bit better for you. Maybe I can even maximize one more time. All right. So this is my re-engagement strategy. So I'm taking all records that are new within 90 days and saying, you know what, I do not want to include those. If they're new within 90 days to the list, there is a possibility that they subscribe themselves and they just kind of kind of forgot about your brand, but they're still interested, and we don't really necessarily need to re-engage them quite yet. You could have a different strategy or approach and say, you know what, 90 days, that's too long. I want to actually go through and uh, do a re-engagement strategy at the 90-day point. That's, that's perfectly fine. It's up to you and how you kind of want to do a re-engagement strategy. It just depends on your business, your business model all around. I'm not here to make that strategic recommendation for you right now. It really truly depends on your business. From there, what I have is a tracking event type in, whether they've opened or clicked an email, and whether they've, um, you know, within the last 180 days. So essentially what I'm doing is if they have not opened or clicked an email within the last 180 days, based off this not segment, they're going to receive this email. It's a re-engagement campaign. All right? So I'm taking everyone who has not opened or clicked within the last 180 days and is not new within the last 90 days, huge caveat, I'm going to send a re-engagement campaign. So we have our segmentation rule. Now I can go to task calendar, go to campaign deployment, under campaign deployment go to life cycle, under life cycle go through and select my re-engagement campaign. Again, it has to be active, I'm not worried about it being active right now since this is a demonstration, but it would have to be active. From there, I can now go through and select my master list, and then I can create my, or use my segmentation rule my re-engagement segmentation rule, and then at that point I can schedule it on the calendar. I can have this start deploying as early as tomorrow. I want it to deploy at 9 a.m. Perfect. From there, and then I want it to repeat daily. So now if I click on schedule, I have a re-engagement campaign that's being deployed daily. Simple as that. We do have the capability, you know, for those of you that are kind of curious regarding, um, actually, I'm, I'm going to self-edit because I don't want to get us into a whole, like, um, different side of, of the business. So uh, we can discuss that uh, later. What I want to do, because we only have another 10 minutes and I want to open it for questions, I'd like to go to Lifecycle, View Campaign, and then let's take a look at a data check option, a data check test. The example that I use for a data check feature is based off of source. So what I did, and there's a couple different ways you can do this, is um, you could go through and do a welcome series based off of source. So my source is our homepage, my source is checkout, my source is a third party called Opt Intelligence. Uh, you know, my source could be through uh, you know, a popover, that type of thing. So I'm sourcing where my records come from. And I'm going to treat them differently. The reason I'm going to treat them differently is because I know a popover is a very good strategy when it comes to acquisition, but I also know that a popover can potentially cause some deliverability issues. So I need to be, I need to be mindful of that. I need to treat them a little bit differently than someone who, who um, came through the, through the checkout process, which is already engaged with my brand who's already purchased something from me. And that, that, that let alone that just that checkout source allows me to potentially do like a first time buyer, or excuse me, a second time buyer, like a thank you email for their purchase. Just simply implying that we got that record through the checkout process. Make sense? So let me go back over here because I have another campaign that I want to use as an example. Um, this one, where is it? Oh, subscription based welcome. So what I've done here is I've actually set this up to where it's going to deploy based off of the first touch, like to everyone. So anyone who comes through the funnel, regardless of source, is going to receive the same welcome. Again, debatable. You can choose however you want to do it, but just using this as an example. Off of that, the second touch is going to boil down to a data check. 
So I'm going to go through and I'm going to say, you know what, under, under data check, so let me just drag this over so you guys can see really what it looks like from the very beginning. If I drag this over here and I click into it, it's going to give me the option to select my table. I'm going to do custom. Under select column, I'm going to go to subscription source. I'm going to do equals, and then I have to put exactly what's in the database, what I'm going to be receiving for that source. So home page, checkout, opt-in tell, pop over, whatever it is, it has to be exactly the same within your source column. And then by doing that, that allows me to say, use the logic yes, no, and if it's a yes, that, that source is home page, then deploy this campaign. If it's not, then do another data check. If it's checkout, then do this campaign. If it's not, then go to another data source. So again, I'm able to cater a welcome series experience based off of source. You guys can imagine this data check feature can be used for many, many, many different things. You can use subscriber data. You can go through and use your zip. You can use, um, you know, last name, which would be a terrible idea. But um, you know, zip is a really good one, or state is also a really good one. So you have geographic locations, that type of thing. Custom fields, you may have a custom field for store location. That's huge. You may want to actually send something specifically to a certain store. You have the capability to do that as well. All right. I don't want to belabor the point. I think you guys have the idea of how you can use data check to go in and create your own campaign. Now. The last thing before we go into APIs, let me go to Lifecycle, View Campaigns again, and then we're going to do a data set. We're going to look at a data set um, check. So this gives you the capability to go through and update data within the database. So for example, let's, let's use the re-engagement um, uh, campaign as an example. Maybe I want to go through and update their data to let them uh, let me know that they actually were within the re-engagement process. I know that they have the potential to lapse in the future. So perhaps after my first touch of the re-engagement strategy, I have it update to re-engagement and then set data to, and then I'm incrementing it because it's a numeric value. This, this field is numeric value. I can, I'm incrementing it by one. I can set it to a text field and do a yes, no, whichever you prefer. Again, that's semantics and really truly how you want to uh, configure your data. But really, this is just letting me know, you know what, they actually did fall within the re-engagement strategy at one point. Now I know that they're re-engaged, which is good. There is a possibility that they may, uh, may become problematic again in the future. I can create another, I can create a segmentation rule off of that audience, use it for a specific campaign. Think about this. Like, I mean, there's so many different possibilities you can use this, uh, this set data feature. Another option, and this is um, one of my strategic account managers and I was talking about this, is that I could go through within, again, my re-engagement strategy. Let's just quickly kind of toggle over. Within my re-engagement strategy, go through and have my first step be a, a data set check feature, which basically increments a value by one or whatever it may be, and then I could use that, that rule in itself as a segmentation rule to remove them from the general population, remove them from standard promotional messages. You see the power there? You have the capability to kind of manipulate it however you want to. There's ways you can kind of use that data, the data check feature and the data set feature to kind of do additional campaigns based off of it. All right, so before we jump into questions, I want to go ahead and toggle back over here. I think we were able to cover everything with uh, the exception of APIs, and this will be really short and sweet because, like I said, I'm not uh, the most tech savvy. Um, oh, hold on. That was a bad move. There we go. Um, from current slides, that's better. So this is like basically testing our standard API. And right here, it's like adding a record via an API call. So if I take this specific, this, this right here, I'm going to go, have to, sorry guys, but I'm going to have to get out so I can kind of copy this. If I copy that 
and then go over here and then drop it into a browser here, it's going to give me the capability to test it. I can go through and add this record successfully to a list. Why is this important? Well, because if I'm adding this to a specific list, like a list number right here, this is going to say, this is going to be a new insert into that list, which becomes a new subscription, which means they're qualified for any life cycle that's tied to it. Make sense? Hopefully that does. You have your Realm password. So you have to have your API turned on, which of course a technical account manager can help you with. You can include fields. So if you want to include custom fields, again, I can do source. So if I wanted to go ahead and make sure that this, the source is being added to, so I can do a, a specific campaign based off of that, I could do custom subscription source, because that's the name of my field, and then go through and then add home page. So now I'm getting that source via the API, and then it's triggering the appropriate series off of that data check. All the same list, it's the same list ID, I just have that data check, which is breaking it down into that mini segmentation role that we were talking about earlier. Go back over here to the presentation really quickly. So this is a completed one um, with a list ID. You go in, test it out. I, like I said, I don't really think it, um, it's a super technical thing to do uh, once you kind of get the hang of it. These are just fields or values that we're passing through an API. Um, and then from there, again, this is just kind of basically testing the addition to a new subscription, a new list, new list ID. So this is the same email address, just with a different list ID, so it's subscribing me to a new list. One thing I want to clarify as a caveat, if a record was on a list before and they unsubscribed from that list, and they come through and resubscribe, that is not considered a new they are not going to qualify for that um, for that uh, new that life cycle. That's probably a good thing as design. That's probably a solid thing. But I just I just want to clarify that. And if you do a test, you go through and test it. You're actually going to get a success mes uh, message if it works successfully. We'll get this message letting you know that you've inserted new records to the database. We also have an add to lifecycle API feature, which uh, kind of draws a, um, it pulls off of a specific lifecycle campaign. It doesn't add them to a list. And personally, in my opinion, my recommendation for like a control, like having a control group, control stake, I would recommend having them added to a list, not to a lifecycle, and just have that list trigger off of a lifecycle campaign. So that way you have some sort of list that track insert, track new subscriptions, that type of thing. The add to life cycle really doesn't do that. I mean, of course, we're going to have additional like reporting features and all that stuff later on, but my recommendation is to add to, add to list feature, truly. 